with the increase in wildlife populations, wild, human wildlife conflicts have also increased. In the past, rural residents, especially agricultural producers and forestry owners, bore the brunt of the wildlife damage. The phrases animal damage control, problem wildlife management and wildlife damage management have been traditionally used to describe the actions taken to reduce economic losses to agricultural produce caused by the wildlife. Well, to dissect this matter, I'm now joined by Gideon Haingura, a researcher at GIS and Wildlife Movement. Thank you for being with us in the studio, sir. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Well, uh, Mr. Ingura, as we said, that there is, or oh, we have identified that there is a, a wildlife, human wildlife conflict cases increasing across uh, the country. But which animals can one identify or pinpoint to say that you are the predator, you are the problem, and the strategies to be um, to be come up with accordingly to deal with the human, the increasing human wildlife conflict? Uh, th uh, thank you for the question. Uh, human wildlife conflict, uh, it's becoming terrible. So, so these are mainly, mainly due to the overpopulation of the, of the animals in Namibia. But the most, uh, the trouble, uh, the most trouble species that are common for, with the human wild conflict is uh, elephant and follow carnivores, lions and leopards, and also baboons are also, mm -hmm. uh, are also one of the terrible ones. But uh, of course, it also depends uh, from which you are, f where, which area you are coming from. Because if you are in Kawango or Kap uh, Kap Zambezi, Zambezi. Mm -hmm. you are often to likely to say that it's crocodile and a bit of elephant. So, but if you are in Kunenes, you are mostly affected by the elephants and the lions. Lions are known to destroy, to eat up a lot of livestock. Livestock, yeah. yes. And now, speaking of livestock, and um, in a situation or in a case of a farmer whereby they would come across uh, the lions or all the other all the other carnivores damaging their livestock, yes. in that, putting ourselves in that scenario, any farmer would want to take action, yes. for example, to try and deter the, the uh, carnivore or try and shoot even the, the carnivore at that time. So what are you advising farmers do at that particular moment? Uh, so when, when you are confronted with the uh, carnivores, especially eating your livestock, so there's always a reaction that comes out. Mm -hmm. So some people are scared. So but you advise, like uh, the government have, uh, have policies and some measures, like education measures, including the conservancy. Mm -hmm. So you advise not to approach that anymore because you don't know what will happen to you. So the best way to do, you just have to, to make sure that you are safe. Or there might be some measurement that are actually known, like a non-lethal, whereby it's like, by coming up with a loud sound, that lion might run away. But if you want to be safe, you just better stay away, run away, and report that case to the nearest. Maybe there might be some ranger in the, in, within the areas so that they can able to deal with that uh, wildlife. So wildlife are also, they are social. Mm -hmm. They are not, whenever you see them, that they're going to bring problems. In most cases, sometimes they are just wandering around. But try to be careful how to approach them and also follow the right procedure. So throughout your... Um, research or as a re throughout your career as a research what are, a researcher what are the communities saying in terms of uh, the peaceful coexistence between themselves and the wildlife because you you just said that wildlife some of them are social which yes. is um, which is which is very a way to describe but what what are the communities saying what are they doing so that they can at least be out of uh, not not uh, temper with the habitat or traditional habitat of the wildlife for example we know yeah. that elephants yes. they have their way if they are to follow a path to access for them to access water or any other any other path so what are the communities doing what are they saying 
while waiting on the rangers and the government and through these uh, awareness campaigns uh, take, uh, uh, that are being held at uh, conservancies and so on. Yes, uh, yeah. So, like, uh, obvious when you, uh, you are confronted with such kind of things, the measure that uh, actually knows, because community themselves, what, like, when you, when you approach them, they are not really scared of the animals. It's only now, recently, because now there's drought. Animals are also competing with us now in, over food, over space, because they don't have enough to eat out mm -hmm. there. They are mm -hmm. coming to raid our crops. Yeah. But generally, those people, when you speak to them, they will always say that traditionally, in the past, they were staying with animals. They know how to do that. So they have measures already. For, for instance, if you want to, to make sure that elephants are away, staying away from your house, there's bees. Bee sounds can scare them. Mm -hmm. Even the chili bombs that you plant around your, your fence, you make sure that your fence is planted with chili plants, elephant will be scared from that. And also there are some, uh, uh, there are some uh, community uh, programs that are out there, like whereby the, the, uh, the water installations have been protected by, uh, by, ele uh, by elephant wall. The elephants are not able to access the pipe, the palms and other things like that. So all these things are working because I remember when I was in, in Kunene, mm -hmm. we had a program on elephants. So we spoke about it. We wanted to see how the perspective of, of them toward elephants. So they, it turned out that they are not really scared of the elephants. Apparently some of the elephants, they have, they have big value. They even have names of those elephants. They know when they are coming and when they are going. So, so they would be saying that the yes. elephant Gideon is on its way. Can we Can be we in our this? houses? Yes, something like that. Because what, what they did, they told us that as long as waters, as long as there's enough water, elephant, they don't have problems. So that have worked. Even the era programs, like it is an organization that really responsible with that, it's doing well in Kunenes. So, but there are some cases, some scenario, but at least if there's enough, there's enough water, elephants are able to Now, in. what about the regions that are surrounded by rivers? For example, the two Kavango regions yes. as well as Zambezi, whereby human wildlife conflict involving crocodiles, as you described earlier, is rampant. So like the, the, the government, the government doing, is doing, doing the, what they can, at least. Like for instance, they have some programs, they've take, they've uh, collar most of the, croc uh, the crocodiles. So, so these collars allows, allows the community to get early, early alerts that the crocodiles are coming. And they, they have been some area where the government have put fences and also the coming By out. the river beds. Yes, mm -hmm. to make sure that the people are not allowed to go there because those are danger zones. So the signs are all over there. And uh, because unfortunately, the, those crocodiles, uh, there's drought. So there's not, there's not enough fish for those uh, crocodiles to eat. They are forced to look to scavenge food outside. So in that way, uh, when they come out, they end up finding the human being, then they, they end up killing that human beings. But uh, the governments and the community within the areas are really giving advice that this area, you, sh you guys should stay away. Don't be this and this. So there are measures in places. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, Gideon, as a researcher, I'm sure you have been following the news with regard to government making the announcement that a certain number of wildlife would be culled um, to assist with the, with the drought relief program. And then it has received a backlash from the conservation groups worldwide and so on. What do you, what do you, you did allude to the fact that there is an overpopulation in, in problem yes, yes. with regard to the wildlife. So what, what, what do you make of this, uh, the decision by the government as well as the backlash? <laughs> That's a controversial topic mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So because uh, when you are dealing with conservations, you, has, you have to consider about two sides. The other side will be against, the other side they will, uh, they will be for. So, but uh, we have seen that in most cases, conservation's effort can only be achieved when the communities are involved. If so it's a matter of balance. It's a matter of balance. If the communities are well engaged in those issues, and also we can also see that the animals are a lot. So we do not have enough, enough uh, pasture for those animals. 
So they are increasingly increasing uh, coming toward to us to eat our plants. At the end of the day, the, the peoples are forced to kill the, to kill those animals. Mm -hmm. So we do not want to see that also to happen in most cases. People are some people are killed also in in, in, in the process. In mm -hmm. the process. So culling is one of the, it's one of the measures that uh, it's out there whereby we balance because if your number of it's the same like if you have a lot of livestock, you are doing rotational farming. So if you have a lot of livestock, what do you do? You actually uh, try to take out the old ones. You don't necessarily take out the productive one. You mm -hmm. take out the old ones so that you can at least give space also. Otherwise, it's going to be over, over grazing. At the end of the day, there will be worse problems. So that's, that, that's how I can also view these things. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure the government have done, uh, done its, uh, its research and also they have engaged with the communities. Unfortunately, now it's, it's difficult to prevent the black, uh, backlash from others. Mm -hmm. But if you live here in Namibia, you can see the conflict we are facing with these animals. So how do you, how do you tell these people? So as you said, it's yes. a matter of a balance of finding the right formula yes. so that the process is not viewed as a careless um, yes. culling of, of wild animals. Now, our rain prospects, well, we are in November now and our rainy season has not been promising, which means all the factors that you described that leads to human wildlife conflict still is is among us will be among us until until the rainy season or we get sufficient yeah. rainfall so just finally Gideon what can you tell the farmers uh, the those living within the conservancies or closer to the uh, cons conservation areas and so on to just take care when it to avoid human wildlife conflict uh, so uh, my advice that would be that uh uh, less, uh, less involve everybody, so let's uh, bring everybody along. There are some people out there who also don't know, educate everybody, because conservation is uh, it's about coming together. So another thing is also because uh, the conservancy, conservancy have put some measures, for instance. There are some zoning areas out there where people are not allowed to stay. We need to stay away from those zones because we are busy encroaching on animals' uh, territories. Unfortunately, we will end up having conflict. So the studies are also going out where we can also come up with ways how to, to have the designate, designated corridors for, uh, for wildlife animals. And we, in these cases, we are also going to inform the public and the police makers to see how we can coexist with, uh, with animals. Mm -hmm. Like what have happened in the past with our parents. That's are why they, we have a lot of- Are specific areas being targeted? <laughs> So, uh, like, the research that we are working on currently is we are working at uh, Kunene. There have been some research out there in Zambezi also, at the Kaza. They are also looking at the corridors. The frontier. Mm -hmm. Yes, the frontiers. So, these things can be done. So, we have seen it already. Our, our, our ancestors, they have lived with animals. That's why Africa still have a lot of animals, because we have better conservation ideas. So, we can still keep on uh, doing the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, just lastly, why these, why the two regions, Zambezi and Kunene? So like, uh, like uh, the research that uh, we are currently working on, it's mostly focusing on Kunene because Kunene is one of the driest, driest uh, areas, mm -hmm. regions. So it's uh, been impacted with a lot of uh, trout issues. And also one of the regions that are highly affected by the wildlife conflict. So Kunene, uh, Zambezi, that's just a research that was that ongoing research that has been done by other guys, other organizations. Mm -hmm. But for our focus mainly is on Kunene because that's the hotspot. We have to find ways, otherwise we are losing animals. Do yeah. other, other areas uh, stand to benefit from the research even though the focus area is Kunene? Yes, because uh, remember it's, uh, it's climate, climate changing. So we have seen some of the area where there was no drought or there was no flood, flood is coming. Mm -hmm. so, Whatever the model that we are trying to achieve in Kunene, that model is also going to replicate to other regions. It's going to inform, it's going to inform them so that we can conserve our wildlife.